it's March 2017. With me is Louise Proctor, who last spoke to me about a year and a half ago about uh, NASA's mission to Europa. Now, I believe it has an official name and things have moved on a bit, Louise. So thanks for joining me and uh, please tell people on the Moon's Moot what's happening now. OK, well, um, last time we spoke, we had just been selected for flight after many years of trying to get this mission off the ground. So we were very excited about that. Uh, we selected a payload of instruments, so we were all ready to go. Uh, and then all the hard work actually began. So it's one thing to come up with a, a study concept on paper. Uh, it's another thing to actually implement it. Um, so the last 18 months have been spent in something called phase A, which is essentially um, sort of real hardcore study phase where you decide exactly what subsystems you're going to use, what launch vehicle you're going to use. You know, you, you start to narrow down the decision points and make it start to look real. Okay, and it's officially Europa Clipper now, which you'll be pleased I'm about. I'm very happy about that. We've been calling it that for years, and had they called it something else, we would have had to have renamed all our folders and everything on our computers, <laughs> so, yeah, logistically. But it's such a great name. No one could come up with a better name than oh, the Europa Clipper. I like it. How many flybys of Europa? Um, it depends on the tour. I'm not sure the current number, but it's, it's, I think the last number I saw was 42 flybys. We should be able to do all our primary mission science in that number of okay. flybys. And since we last spoke, uh, the likelihood of the plumes of Europa being real has considerably increased, has increased I guess. Yes. Has that changed plans for the mission? What will we be able to do with the plumes? Um, it hasn't changed uh, plans particularly. The instrument payload we selected, we tried to deliberately select instruments that would be able to detect plumes if they were there, but that would also be useful if it turned out they weren't there. Um, so nothing has changed. Uh, it would be great if we really could be certain there are plumes there but as you say the likelihood has increased uh, but nothing's changed as far as the mission goes it's still going to be able to do a great job of observing those plumes if they exist okay so you'll be looking at the surface in particular will you fly through any plumes are you equipped to, to we, do that we like could um, yeah we actually uh, one of the instruments that was selected was a uv spectrometer which would be able to see the plumes uh, across the limb from a distance so it's not just looking down at the surface it's also looking kind of across the limb. Uh, we also have a couple of spectrometers, a mass spectrometer and a dust uh, spectrometer that we could uh, get some great samples and actually fly through the plumes. And right now um, we are expected to have um, 10 of those flybys would be at 25 kilometers or lower Ooh. and uh, 20 of them would be at 50 kilometers or lower. So three quarters of the flybys um, would be right in the middle of the plumes if they are 200 kilometers high as has been proposed brilliant yes Exc so it could be really nice exciting times Certainly and is. i know this isn't your mission as well but there's serious talk of a europa lander now there uh, is has been this week yeah and uh, i was uh, part of uh, a workshop on sunday where we were looking at a report that the, the europa lander uh, science definition team just put out uh, explaining their science goals if they were to land on the surface of europa it's very exciting stuff yeah, thanks for giving us your time, Louise. Anytime.